Can we use young, fresh places, Miss, and make me feel... Fresh places? Places, yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Just humouring. Right, OK. So, good afternoon all. We're here to talk about marking and feedback. Now, we all know, even at the end of a long day, that marking should be about this. see some thoughtful nods, we're taking this on board. So why is it then that marking feels like this? Okay, triple marking there of course was triple impact marking, so the students assess it themselves, you mark it, they respond to your marking. The triple impact marking, that's how it feels sometimes. It feels like in principle we want to mark well, we want to give each student the feedback, but in reality it's really difficult. So the first thing I'm going to get you to do, I've got some nice green pens for you and I've got a lovely piece of work I prepared earlier. If you could pass out the pens please. If you could uh, get yourselves into three groups. You can all have a piece of the wondrous work but I would like you all please just to give me some feedback on it, okay? Have a little annotate with your green pen, do some marking. Come on. Here you go, Luke. Take one pass one on. Okay, so... Here we go. Take one pass one on. So this is the work that uh, has been produced in my exercise book. Here's my exercise book. I'd like you to uh, mark and annotate my work. I'm only going to give you three minutes. Is this yours, okay. Miss? Or did they... How are you going to mark my work? Did you find it? It's a special piece of writing. Okay, you've only got three minutes. Off you go. Remember, you're supposed to be in three groups. As in marking in groups? Yeah, you can discuss it in groups. just under a minute so try and just uh, get together in your group and see what kind of feedback you're going to give me. I spoke to Peter. Is it two T's yeah. or two F's? Yeah. Exactly. It comes from the. I thought it was good to see you. She explained that. Yeah, yeah. She got wet. And then she gave a. Yeah, she had a motion report and she gave an example of how she got wet, how it made it feel. So that was good. There's a good pile of three in there, isn't there? Cars, bicycles, and. Lorries. Yeah, nice. Tell me even better here. So the spelling and grammar, little love hearts and things like that. Got us touching the ball. Yeah. So, like, this is good. Okay, so that's our three minutes. So a very articulate piece of writing. A walk in the rain. 
On Tuesday it rained and I got wet and my socks were soaked through. Paul and me were fighting over whose turn it was to go and get milk and I lost so I had to go to the shop. On the way it rained, lots of people were rushing around and I got splashed by cars and bicycles and lorries. Sorry, said Paul. I threw the bag at him and cried because I was cross. The end. Okay, so a beautiful piece of writing. We should have three groups now. Let's have a look at some feedback. So over here, what feedback have you got for me? Um, in terms of positives, we said that she was emotional response. Uh, so she described what happened, so she said that she got wet, um, then how it happened, and then how it made her feel, which we thought was a positive way of writing, so she structured mm. it well. Great, so I know what I've done well in this piece. Yes. Oh, okay. so she's your piece. Yeah. Well Thank you. Um, in terms of even better it is, a slight negative was about this grammar and spelling, the little heart above all the eyes, and it was quite a nice touch, which maybe it's not the best thing to do. Nice touch, but maybe not appropriate. Yeah. Okay, so Tom, what I can do, you've written it here, so quite clearly, oh, you've started a question here, can you? What were you going, were you going to give me a question and of suggesting something I could do to improve, um, or just not quite finished it? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's to do with, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I, I normally do that when, on the even better, so you are I ask them a question. That was me who thought that, I was always told to do that. Good, so I can so, respond to your question. Yeah, so, so can you do it, and then the student says whether they can or can't, and then the next time they try and prove it. Okay, excellent, thank you. Okay, so this screen, have you got some feedback for me? Uh, yeah, similarly we like, we quite like the, it conveyed emotion. Um, that was really well, and um, I wanted, yeah, I think I wanted to focus on the um, the heart-shaped eyes and the capital letters for names, uh, just and not mention the spelling yet. Okay, focus so on those things first, and then. Okay, so you give me something to work on, uh, Mr. Johns. Can I see your page? Thank you. Let's see what feedback I've got here. Okay, so I know that in terms of presentation, I haven't used a ruler, which I should do because he's picked me up on that one. Again, you've circled the heart, so I'm assuming you don't want me to do that. You've picked up on some grammatical mistakes. You've pointed out a spelling mistake, but you haven't told me the correct spelling, so obviously. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, because I was going to go away and look at my dictionary. Not the spelling, but I was going to ask you to write out a sentence. Correctly. Fantastic. So one of the sentences right after. Okay, and uh, Mr. Lashman, can I have your feedback? Sorry. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Ashman is the teacher who takes my book home, who spends a long time by herself writing lots and lots of comments on it, doing lots of marking, <clears throat> but then comes to the next lesson get statement, hand out all of the books, and then just move straight on to the next lesson. Okay? So, so, so all the time. <laughs> all the time. Obviously, I can say that because I know that isn't what she does. Um, but I'm just trying to prove a point there, that it doesn't matter how much effort we put into our marking and feedback, if we're not actually getting students to act on it, so like you were saying, you like to put a question so the students can then respond to it, James, you were going to ask me to actually give you an example using my red pen. So again, getting me to actually do something concrete with that feedback. So consolidating my knowledge, working on the mistakes that I'd made so they're already corrected. That way I'm likely to move on and I'm likely to progress. But unfortunately, however much time you spend marking, if you don't give me any chance to act on it, I'm probably not going to improve. So that's the importance here of the initiative that we're trying to implement throughout the school. So the dirt. Okay? Directed improvement and reflection time. People have got different images. I know um, Gay has a picture of a pile of dirt, etc. But the whole principle is that we give the marking back to students and they have something interactive to do with it. So you could have some of you heard Matteo has the, um, the little codes so students scan them in on their phones. They can then go to the website which takes them to look at the past tense. They can come up with an example of it. Some people use questions, some people mark on the left hand side and get the students just to write on the right hand side for an extended piece because then you can write your comments, you can write questions, the students can get their red pens, they can respond straight away and it means you can consolidate their learning. It also means that when you take the books in, 
you can see what they've missed, what hasn't been picked up on, and whether or not you need to alter your planning. So that's the point of our dirt time. So let's think about are we up to date with our marking. Now we looked on the inset day at what some of those pitfalls of marking were. So we talk about marking, but it takes time. You only had three minutes there. Some of you managed to scribble down loads, and some of you didn't. Three minutes isn't a lot of time, and yet we expect our teachers to mark whole class loads full of books, and then to make that marking meaningful. So it takes time that could be spent planning lessons. There's an argument that it depersonalises the feedback system. So unless you're actually there with the student talking about it, they haven't got the opportunity to ask you about what you've written, to clarify something that you've said, so they fully understand what you've written. And then also you can argue, as Andy Farby does, that it creates a culture of dependency. So students are so used to us picking up on spelling then writing out the correct spelling for them. So we know we can spell it, but actually they just read and go, Ooh, and then move on to the next lesson. Here at Felfin, we've been asking people to address presentation. I was really glad to see that James had picked up, I've lost my work now over there, that I hadn't used a ruler. Okay? I'd underlined it in a tokenistic way. I've done a squiggly line. Nobody picked me up on the fact that I hadn't used a full and formal date. I did. Oh, uh, well done. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, so we do ask our students to use a full and formal date. We do use them to use a ruler. And we ask them just to have these really, really simple expectations. And I put there, are we consistent? And the answer probably at the moment from doing book books is not yet. Okay? We want consistency because the students we have now will be assessed on their knowledge and their understanding of the curriculum more and more through their writing. So writing is a skill, it's a lifelong skill that they need to be able to secure as early as possible. We talk about securing literacy and again this is a joint responsibility, it's within the teacher standards so we've all got to be doing it. We have a common focus for marking here. So the spelling, new paragraph, etc. And some of the work that we've been doing in our marking and feedback teacher learning community is we've been trying to look at how can shortcuts like this save us time whilst we're marking, but actually help us to focus in detail on what it is students need to do to improve. So we've come up with this one here. So we have PR for presentation purely because it stops us having to write things like ruler with a question mark or please underline your headings. If all teachers in every classroom across the school is using PR for presentation, it makes the child think, well, what is wrong with my presentation? Is it that I haven't written the full formal date? Is it that I haven't underlined? Is it they can't read my handwriting? But they're actually thinking about and interacting with the marking to look what's wrong with their work. We've kept the traditional ones in there, but we've added EX. And X can mean explain, justify, give me an example, develop your understanding. We've put there, or tried to say that we should bring back EG. So we've put times two, give me two examples. Okay? W for space wasted, and then we've just gone back to the traditional underlining in green, just a wavy line, which suggests to the child either you've used a colloquial term when you should be using formal language, so you've used a contraction like didn't instead of did not, or it might be that they've used the same word lots and lots of times you want them to try something different. It could be that they've used a word in the wrong context, but instead of you having to write down exactly what it is they've done wrong, you can just use the wavy line, and that means that the student then has to take some ownership of what you've done to look at their work and see how can I improve this. This is all about trying to encourage our students to be independent learners. For us to make this work, we've got to work together. And we've got to embed these skills because they're important. Okay? These are important life skills that we are giving our students. So it's the responsibility of each and every one of us. Now, as I say, the Teach Learning community, we're going to have a look at those codes, we'll trial them. If we think they really work, then uh, we will hopefully roll them out whole school. But obviously, if they don't work, we'll tweak them until we find something that does. So, good grammars like personal hygiene. So, 
little letter. Dear Jack, I want a man who knows